So the Cybertruck has been out now for a few months in customer hands, and we've all had a chance to finally see how this thing charges. And quite honestly, in my opinion, it's pretty decent. Now, some people have suggested it's not that great, but I agree it could get better, and that's exactly what it's going to get. This actually reminds me a lot of the early days of the Model 3, where we had all these constant updates over the course of a year, maybe a year and a half, and the charging curve on the Model 3 continued to improve. That's kind of the same case here with the Cybertruck. Probably the biggest thing about it, though, is... V4 or supercharging is not available, at least in its intended platform. So you can't really hook up a Cybertruck to a Tesla charger and see the maximum output that it can accept. Now that said, you can, in a roundabout way, hook up a Cybertruck to another network's charging equipment and specifically Electrify America. There are a number of 350 kilowatt chargers that are 800 volt and those work pretty well for the Cybertruck. However, there are some challenges here. The CCS cable and the CCS adapter directly from Tesla does not actually fit the Cybertruck. So the first challenge here is even just getting an adapter to fit. Well, actually there's a solution for that. And I actually, on my recent road trip from Florida to California in a Cybertruck, I decided to give it a shot. And I actually charged the Cybertruck from a very low state of charge, talking like one, 2% all the way up to in one case, 86%. And I wanted to see what this looks like on a non-Tesla charger, if we could get a successful charge, what that charging curve looks like. So I have the data here. We also recently heard from Tesla directly that we're going to have an enhanced charging curve coming. Tesla has spent little to no time on the higher voltage charging setup for the Cybertruck. And that's great news because what we're gonna be looking at right now is without a whole lot of attention directly from Tesla. I charged the Cybertruck two times back to back. Weather conditions were ideal. And although I did have technically successful charges on the first go around, I actually was having issues from 2% to 5% before finally unhooking and getting it to successfully charge correctly. So the lowest state of charge where we would have seen the absolute peak kilowatt charge rate, I was unable to record. So that charging session is from 5% to 62%. The second charging session, I had no issues. So from 2% all the way to 86%. So although these are different ranges, the big thing is the bulk of the max charge rate is what I'm gonna share with you today. Essentially what we're looking at is this. We peaked at 325 kilowatts and uh, 324, that first drop starts around seven to eight percent. So we were able to maintain that 325 kilowatt from 2% up to seven and 8%. That next drop was right around 21% at 250 kilowatts, and then at 30% for 200 kilowatts, and 40% at 150 kilowatts, and then at 60%, we then hit that 100 kilowatt level. So. The charging curve allows you to stay above 100 kilowatts at about 60% state of charge. The thing that's interesting here though is after 60%, the charging did some weird things. So somewhere around 70%, the charging curve sat at around 75 to 78 kilowatt, just kind of hovered there all the way till 80%. And then it started to walk up to 82 kilowatts. So I was excited because we're starting to see this thing come right back up. After it hit 85%, however, we did drop all the way back down to 75. But instead of continuing to drop straight down, we actually have this period of the charging curve between I say 60 and 85%. 75 kilowatt charge rate is not that bad for that state of charge, especially for a Tesla. So how do we break this down into practical terms that'll actually tell us something? Well, think of it this way. Tesla says that the Cybertruck is rated for 136 miles of charge in 15 minutes. And I am fairly certain 136 miles of charge is 40%. So they're saying you can charge 40% of the battery in 15 minutes. Also, when we look at the charge curves that I saw, we're seeing the same results, even on that higher voltage charging. So 136-ish or 40% of charge in about 15 minutes. That's what it does right now, whether it's on Tesla's network or on the 800 volt chargers from Electrify America. Now, what we've heard is coming soon is 154 miles in 15 minutes. 
So that should be something like 45% in that same amount of time. Although it doesn't sound like a lot, that's 13% improvement in charge, which is pretty good. And to put this into perspective for you, when we look at Tesla's other vehicles, here's what those charge rates look like in that 15 minutes of time. So the charge rate has absolutely improved since it was originally launched and customers started taking delivery. The nice thing is we're continuing to see these improvements happen naturally and through software updates, but we also know that there's supposedly a 20% charging improvement on the way. So this is going to continue to improve and until Tesla starts launching true V4 charging pedestals that have our next generation of high voltage charging. We won't really know what Tesla intends for the truck to have, but we do know the truck is asking for as much as it can handle. The last thing to talk about here is voltage versus amperage. So I was able to observe what those voltage and amperage levels were because I was in service mode during these charging setup. What we can see is on higher voltage equipment, Tesla is actually prioritizing voltage over amperage. The reason why that's important is because of heat. Actually, if you pull more amps instead of voltage, you're going to have more heat. So by pushing things over to the voltage side, we're actually having less heat. And that is very clearly demonstrated in the actual touch and feel of the charging equipment, the handle specifically right there at the charge port. So as this thing starts to charge up, Tesla is ramping up voltage and walking down that amperage. So that's how they're able to maintain a higher state of charge kilowatts during that charging session without having heat issues. Now, by doing this, Tesla doesn't really have to look at new solutions for charging cable cooling because the existing equipment works just fine for existing Teslas. The Cybertruck might be an issue though because it does pull a much faster charge rate and V4 equipment is probably going to handle that a little bit better. But by focusing on voltage, giving you that higher kilowatt rate, which is all you're going to see and all that matters to you, how they get there doesn't really matter necessarily, but this will help with heat. So it appears anyways, the Tesla is going more on the voltage side on these charge curves. At least that's what I have observed in my settings here. So what I'm going to be doing over time is I'm going to keep this data and I'm going to keep logging this because this is important stuff. We've heard from some people that the 4680 battery cells are terrible because their Model Y all-wheel drive is terrible at charging, and that's just not even true. These are not the same cells that were in the all-wheel drive Model Y. These are a next generation cell, and as you can clearly see, much more capable than what the 4680 cells that are in the Model Y all-wheel drive. So that's it for today. I hope that this little update was insightful. I'm going to be keeping track of these charge rates, and we'll see how this improves over time. So thank you so much for joining us today. Catch you next time.